Hey, what's up everybody? Hammer Heart Metal Reviews here once again. Today we're doing the second edition in my series where I do a discography overview of a band where I own their entire discography on CD. And today we are going to be talking about Moon Sorrow. Absolutely one of my favorite bands of all time. One of the most epic bands out there. If you have not heard this band before, they are from Finland play a very unique blend of epic folk metal mixed with black metal. Just pagan metal is probably the best way to describe their sound. They do have seven full lengths, so I will be going through those individually, kind of giving a mini review of each album. And in addition to that, I also own one of the early demos as well as a very epic EP that they released. So I'm going to be going through all the releases that I have by them. Um, this band is just really known for writing some very extremely long epic songs. They're just chocked full of these folky melodies that are so catchy and that are going to stick in your head. Kind of gone through some different phases in their career, starting out as more of a pure black metal band, but then infusing it with more folk by the time they released their debut full length. And then after a few albums, they scaled back the folk and dialed up the black metal once again, but it's always about that balance with them and writing these long epics that just truly take you on a heathen journey. Absolutely amazing stuff. So the band was formed by two cousins, Ville Sorvalli and Henry Sorvalli. So Billy is on bass guitar and lead vocals, and Henry is the main songwriter who plays guitars, keys, backing vocals, a bunch of folk instruments. So it started out with just the two of them. Um, by the time their debut full length came out, they did add a drummer, Marco Tar uh, Tarvonen, probably mispronouncing that. I'm going to be mispronouncing a lot throughout this video, so fair warning, I will apologize in advance. They also had some live musicians that would join them on stage, like Michia Harliati, probably mispronouncing that, uh, on guitar. After a couple albums, he actually joined the band full time and started playing guitar. And then also Lord Urin on live keyboards and backing vocals. Um, after a couple albums, he just joined the band as well. So they've kind of had the same five members for quite some time uh, these days. Henry Sorvalli does not join them on stage anymore. He's just the studio musician. They have a different session live guitar player that comes into play. They haven't released an album since 2016. I'm not sure if it's because Henry's like taking a break because he's not doing the live stuff and maybe isn't composing anymore. Not too sure, but all I can do is keep my fingers crossed that they are going to release another album because it's long overdue, but I'm getting off track here. Let's just go through their discography chronologically. I'll give you my thoughts on each one. So like I mentioned early on, they were just basically a purely black metal band. They had released a demo titled, titled Metza in 1997. I don't own that one. It was only released on cassette. I would love to get my hands on it, but any copy I ever find is extremely expensive. I can't actually pull the trigger on it. But then after that, I do actually have their next demo, which is closer to a full length, but still demo quality from 1999. And I'm sure to per mispronounce this, Tana Equinen Talvi. And check out the album cover there really awesome stuff here you can see the cd just five tracks on here but four of them are very lengthy before the nice outro so at this point um this was just the two star valley cousins used program drums i should have said the translation of this album is this winter eternal and so yeah at this stage this was very much like symphonic black metal almost think like early demu Borgir mixed with some early enslaved with kind of the viking themes and the way that they incorporate keyboards in their early albums this is definitely the most raw moon sorrow that you will get it's probably the fastest they ever were as well that would progress greatly even by the time their full length album after this would come out but all that being said even though this is raw and it's a much different sound then their subsequent albums. I still really dig this one quite a lot. Awesome album art there too. And yeah, it just takes you on a black metal journey. Really dig this. If I was gonna score it out of 10, I'd probably give it eight out of 10. Yeah, the production is a little bit rougher around the edges. It's not perfect, but it's a demo. They're just kind of starting out, getting their feet wet. Um, but for what it is, I still absolutely love it. And better things were yet to come. So after that, they would actually release their full-length debut from 2001, Sudan Uni, or A Wolf's Dream. 
So I actually have the re-release here. Um, this one came with a special DVD on the reissue that includes some promo videos and some a live concert as well. And since the debut, their sound has evolved quite a bit here. Uh, even though it's only a couple years later, they really injected way more folk instrumentation and just folk music into their sound. And they just really started to create these epic soundscapes that they became known for. Um, in their later albums, their songs were much longer. There's still some hints of that here with the song like 1065 Aika, just absolutely epic. Uh, the opening song here as well, Ukanoi Siumalan Poika, absolutely amazing. This one is probably their folkiest album. Um, it kind of went in that direction, but it still retains enough black metal that I would not just call us a purely folk metal band. Like they've always kind of straddled that line between folk metal and black metal. It's a hard band to describe, but absolutely amazing debut, really solid stuff. I would give this one 8.5 out of 10. And once again, even better things were on the horizon in the very near future. All right, also in 2001, but later in the year, they would release their sophomore album, Boimasta Yakuniasta. This one is where they really started to excel and take off even more in terms of songwriting. Absolutely amazing stuff here. Wow, this started a string of about four albums that, in my opinion, are like close to perfection. This one really upped the epicness compared to the debut. Like I said, much more mature songwriting, and it's just got these catchy and memorable parts, and it's so powerful and triumphant here. Like, it's a different vibe than the debut. While it still retains that sound, you can still tell it's the same band. It's not a complete shift in style, but it just really drew out the epicness, and wow, these songs will stay with you. They are so catchy. Kulin Pasa, Sanka Hari. Sankar Hiata. I cannot ever say these, so I apologize once again. I do not speak Finnish, so any of my Finnish viewers out there, I do apologize. I'm doing my best. But uh, yeah, I know some people maybe have a hard time getting into a band that sings just in Finnish. But to me, music is universal. If I don't understand the lyrics, that's okay. All the lyric books come with the translations in English anyways, and they're really well done. But don't not listen to them just because you don't speak the language. Like, it's absolutely amazing. The black metal rasps are great. There's catchy, clean vocal parts sprinkled in as well. And yeah, just triumphant and epic through and through. Awesome, awesome stuff. I would give this one 9.5 out of 10. Very close to perfection. Easily one of their best. Keeping in their string of absolutely amazing albums, their third full length, Kavin Kantaya. Up next, here I got the Digipack re-release. Absolutely one of my favorite albums of all time, not just by Moonsoro, but by anyone. This one really continued the style of the previous album, but it went even more epic and even brought in some progressive elements, which they've always kind of had shades of, but this is probably their most progressive album. Brings in a ton of like 80s style synths or organ that just really add another dimension to this sound like it's maybe a little more of a relaxed album compared to some of the earlier black metal thrashing parts but the style on here is it just suits them perfectly it's so epic once again so powerful and triumphant they are just known for these long songs i should have said this album translates to stone bear i forgot to tell you the previous one boimasia kuniasta was translated as of strength and honor and that album title suited it absolutely perfectly and this one yeah i mean look at that cover absolutely awesome favorite tracks on here i mean the whole goddamn album but the opener rhino oila and of course they have a music video for you malton kapuki which is great go check that out it's probably a good introduction to the band if you've never heard them before just takes you on a journey these albums are all meant to be listened to from start to finish Easily one of my favorite bands for a reason, and this album is a perfect example why another one that I will give 9.5 out of 10 to. I'm trying not to give too many perfect scores, but I mean, these albums all in a row here are as close to perfection as you can get from one band, and yeah, that one is not too far off. Amazing stuff. All right, after that, possibly my favorite Moon Sorrow album from 2005, Verissa Keat, or Blood Verses. So this one, wow, 
absolutely amazing. Only five tracks and it's extremely long. This is where they really started amping up the lengths of their songs, which would be a theme on subsequent albums, as I will explain shortly. Like I said, this is possibly my favorite Moon Sorrow album, which is really saying something because all of these albums are just insanely good. On this album, they did start to dial back the folk a little bit and darken their sound, bring in more of the black metal aesthetic and feel to the overall atmosphere. It's more of a dark soundscape on this one, but there's still folky parts in there. I don't want to say they've got rid of it altogether. It's still very much just moon snarl style metal. But yeah, bringing that black metal back in, this album finds that perfect balance between the folky parts and the black metal. And yeah, 15 minute songs is kind of the common theme throughout here. The first four songs are all absolutely amazing, long epics of pagan metal. And then the outro is a nice little folk song that just sounds like you're at a campfire. And it's a perfect way to close this out. Favorite tracks on here, Pamiya, one of my favorite uh, Moon Sorrow songs ever. Um, Pasca, also amazing. But really this entire album front to back is a goddamn masterpiece. Awesome stuff. Another 9.5 out of 10. Maybe I will rank these all at the end to even because I'm kind of scoring these all around the same, but I'll try to pick an order right when I'm done here. All right. Speaking of long songs, the next album I'm going to talk about is probably the most epic thing you will ever hear by any band ever. That is their fifth full length, Be Habitati, or Chapter 5, Ravaged. So I got the Digipack here as well. This album is only two songs, but it is around 56 minutes. So that gives you a, a taste of how long they are. I'll check this out. The first song is just over half an hour. The second song is 26 minutes. So if you're not into long songs, you're not going to like this album. But wow, does this take you on a journey. And there's different segments in the song. Like it might feel like you're listening to different songs, but it all ties together beautifully. This is just amazing stuff, like the definition of epic. This kind of follows the similar style from Varissa Keat in terms of the epicness and that is more on the black metal side than the folk metal side, but it's still got those hints of it in there and it's just amazing. This is, yeah, like I said, just some of the most epic stuff ever. I'm not going to pick favorite songs when there's only two songs. The whole thing is just amazing. You got to go check this out. If you have not, please do yourself a favor and go listen to it. Oh, I didn't score it out of 10. I'm getting sidetracked here. Another 9.5. That's four 9.5s in a row. One of the best bands ever. One of the best stretches of four albums by any band ever. Um, give me some picks down below. I don't, I don't know any bands that have put out four albums in a row that are that good in this genre. Not even close. But anyways, let's keep this going. So after that, they did release an EP, but I'll use the word EP very loosely. It is like classified as an EP, but it's 68 minutes. That's a full length, but nonetheless, Tulemerski, the EP, one of the strangest uh, CD cases here that you can kind of see, it's got like a different kind of setup. You push it open on the side. But, uh, I can't even open it because it's so odd, but yeah, really awesome stuff here. The booklet is a little bit bigger than a standard CD booklet. You got the awesome album art here, just amazing. So this is classified as an EP because really it's one new song, the title track to Lemurski, which is like a half hour song, kind of continuing the trend from Be Have a Teti. Uh, I should say this album is, translates to Firestorm and that is the perfect description for this song. That's why it's classified as an EP because it's just that one main song. And then after that, there's a couple cover songs like they do For Whom the Bell Tolls by Metallica. Um, and there's also a couple old songs from their early demo days that they've reimagined and re-recorded. So it's like one song EP plus some bonus tracks. That's why I think they're classifying it as an EP. But just for the title track alone, it's worth the price of admission. I mean, come on, 30 minutes of glorious heathen pagan metal. Doesn't get much better than that. This song would have fit perfectly on the previous album. It's like similar style. So all in all... I mean, I love the title track with the covers and stuff. It like maybe doesn't flow as an album as a whole, like some of the previous ones, but it's an EP. It's a collection of old stuff. So you gotta take this separately from their discography. I'm still giving this 8.5 out of 10, just on the strength of the title track alone, it would be even higher. But nonetheless, in the scope of their discography, 
still amazing. Definitely go check it out. All right, after that, they're back with their sixth full length album, which I will probably mispronounce Varjoina Kulyeme Kuroiden Masa from 2011, or As Shadows We Walk in the Land of the Dead. So you got the CD here, still got the sticker on there because they put it not on the plastic but right on the case. So I didn't want to mess it up, but nonetheless. Uh, yeah, awesome stuff here. The album cover maybe isn't as interesting as some of their past album covers. It's just them kind of standing on a hill. But this album, I think, is a little bit misunderstood. This is easily their most sorrowful album. It's a lot darker and maybe more mid-paced than some of their past efforts. But this is like a concept story. And in between each song, there's like interludes of a man walking through the snow. And as the album progresses, like he ends up dying and he screams in pain. And it's just an amazing journey from start to finish. Maybe it's not my favorite Moon Sorrow album, but nonetheless, there are some absolute standout moments here, and it's made to be listened to as a whole. My favorite track on here is easily Huto. That is possibly my favorite Moon Sorrow song ever. So even though I maybe don't consider this album quite on the level as their previous four lengths, it's not far behind. This is still an absolute masterpiece of sorrowful pagan metal absolutely amazing i'll give this one 8.5 out of 10 just because i don't think it's quite as good as the previous ones i talked about does not mean that you should not check it out it's absolutely amazing as every single one of their albums is and you should go check it out and that just leaves one more their latest album from 2016 umaltin aika so this one yeah i got the double cd here uh came with a bonus disc with a few uh, cover tracks on there like they cover rotting christ um why can't i even remember what uh oh yeah and a grave song as well I haven't listened to this one in a, to the second disc in a while anyways i listen to the first disc all the time but uh yeah comes with both discs there really awesome stuff We've got the back here and yeah so on this one this started bringing back some more of the folk elements into their sound it wasn't just the purely more focused on black metal, but there's still enough black metal here. I don't want to just call it a folk metal album again. It's typical Moon Sorrow sound, but they've kind of done a throwback to their early days, mixing it with their later day style to make something new that's still uniquely their own. They're not losing the dark edge, but they're bringing back some of those fun folk elements that permeated their early material. So this one really has a little bit of everything, something for everyone, and it's really awesome. I absolutely love this album. The title track to kick off the album, Yamaltin Aika, just shows you what you're in store for right, a, right away. My favorite track on here is probably Mimisbrun, but all in all, just another absolute masterpiece. I'll give this one 9 out of 10. Awesome, awesome stuff. So that's their discography chronologically. I have done a Moonsaur discography ranking probably, I don't know, two years ago, but uh, yeah. I didn't include demo or EP there, so if I was going to re-rank it today, like this is a very tough band to rank just because of how good every single album is, like one of the most flawless discographies out there. But if I'll rank just the seven full lengths, I won't include a demo, an EP in my actual ranking. I wanted to talk about them anyways because I own them and they are amazing, but I'll rank the seven here. My favorite, I would probably go with Varissa Keat followed very closely by Kevin Kantaya, and then right behind that kind of tied third and fourth would be Boimasta Yakuniasta and uh, V. Habiteti. Um, in fifth place, I'd probably go with Yumalta Naika, although it's very tight between that and Sudan Uni. So for today, I'll put Yumalta Naika in fifth, Sudan Uni in sixth, and it pains me to put Barjona Koyemi Koyoiden Masa in 7th, but something has to come there, but like I said, that does not mean it's bad, it's amazing, just something has to come last, so that would be my order, and that's the it for this video, that's their discography in a nutshell, like to show off a little bit of my collection here and there, especially to talk about some of my favorite bands, so you can probably look forward to another edition in this series next month. I haven't decided which band I will do yet, but it'll be a band where I own every CD. So you can look forward to that. Definitely give me your thoughts on Moon Sorrow's albums down below. Always like to get some conversations going, especially on one of my favorite bands. I am rambling again. So until next time, Hamar Mel Reviews, out.